In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to save time by copying and pasting keyframe attributes. We're using an example of a project promoting downtown Dallas where we show the city and then we overlay some objects that show that Dallas works. Let me show you a semi-finished version of the clip and then we'll get back to more information about using keyframe attributes in a copying and pasting situation. What we're going to do now is we have our clips. I'll give myself a little more room so you can see the structure better with the timelines. We have our primary clip here. Then we have beat detection that we've done to insert these marks and drop these other clips in. We have another tutorial showing you how to use the beat detector to do that in a rather efficient manner. But when we play the part that we've got done so far, Each picture overlays the former one. And we've got the timing right. We like that. But one thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I don't want these images to cover the screen. I want them to only be in part of the screen. So I'm going to move down to the first one here and double click on it on track number two. That will get me into my PIP designer. Now we're going to take our mouse and we'll shrink this down to a little smaller than a quarter of the screen. And so this picture will overlay here. But one thing I'd like to do is make it stand out better because when you have an image over an image, uh, the edges are not all that distinct. It can make the eye wonder what's going on here. So we're going to add a border to our picture. I'll click the border box and if, it, if I don't have the down arrow, uh, I need to click the arrow so it's pointing down. I'll change the size to 4 and I'm going to change it from a uniform color and click the down arrow. Let's do a two color gradient and I'm going to begin with a, a color other than white. I'll click on the color and we'll choose black from the basic color pattern and click on OK in the color selector. And now we have a black going to white that gives us kind of a metallic look, as you notice, when we do those two colors. And we'll leave the gradient direction at um, zero degrees. So I like the way that looks. I'll click on OK. And now when I go ahead and play the first part of it, it pops on the screen. Now I have a problem with the other clips. They are not formatted the same way. But the easy way now to adjust them would be to take the second track and highlight that clip, right click on it, and choose Copy Keyframe Attributes. Then I will highlight the clip on track number three, right click, and use Paste Keyframe Attributes. I get an error message, I'm okay, I want to override, yes. Then we'll do the next track, highlight it, right click, do another paste, I'm okay with that. And we'll do the fourth one, highlight it, right click, and paste keyframe attributes a fourth time. And now when I go ahead and play the clips, we notice that the the keyframe which controls the size is uniform on all of them. Let's play this. Now you notice something happened here when we get to the last two. The keyframe attributes do not include the border. And because this track was playing behind the other tracks for a while, 
the border stayed on the screen even though the track in front of it uh, covered the middle. So it's actually borrowing the border from the previous shot. So if I want to make sure this works right, I will have to click independently on each of these, get into my PIP designer, go back to my border properties, uh, knock it up to four on size, and change each of them to a two color gradient with the first color being my black color. And so uh, to guarantee this would work, I would have to do that uh, for each of these. Now the other thing I can do, now that I have them all uh, keyframed identically so they perfectly overlay. If I had done this manually, to get one on top, the other would have been very, very time consuming. I can go ahead and if I want to, I can actually drag up and overlay the previous track. And it can overwrite. And I can save myself some room if I want to do that. I can take this one, move it up, and overwrite again. And I can do that with the last clip as well as we move over here to a little, a little bit and move it up. And now we've got them all next to each other on the same track. We'll overwrite. But again here, I have to go into this one as well. Double click on my PIP designer and go back and modify my border to a size of four. Two color gradient with the first color being my black color. So I cannot use the copy keyframe attributes to get everything identical, but it does save a lot of time, especially when you want to make sure the positioning of the inserted image is exactly on top of the other one. But it's a nice way to use the keyframe attribute copy and paste to save time in your project. The next thing I would do if I were to make it like the example you saw earlier, I would go ahead and go to my title room and I would add my title. Uh, let me do, do that really briefly on track three here. And we would use the title. I'll double click on it, get into the title designer. And we'll change this to Dallas Works. And we'll change the, uh, the font style to impact, move it up into the skyline area. And let me give it just a little bit of a shadow to make it more fun. And I'll knock the shadow down maybe to a two. And then we're going to go to the effect. Let's do a starting effect. Let's make it fade in. And now I've got a fade here if I hover over it and click on OK. And then I would stretch this out. The only thing I haven't done I'll have to do is I'll have to truncate the audio because the audio is longer than my basic clip of uh, downtown Dallas. But when I start it, I'll get the effect I'm looking at. And if you wanted to alternate where you had an image over here and another image to the right, you could do that. And then you could do another image on the left, another image on the right. That would be even more sophisticated. All you have to do is copy the keyframe attributes to the image that is to overlay the other image in the same location.